Alright, so looking at Arduino, Arduino is a problem very similar to one off of the test from yesterday uh, that I think a lot of people struggled with. Um, but also, I've added a couple pieces to it that weren't on this particular problem because I think there were other pieces that people struggled with as well. Alright, it says Quarry had $40 to spend when he arrived at the store. A $36 pair of shoes was one third off. And he wanted to purchase uh, socks, socks, plural, uh, that were $2.50 each. What is the greatest amount of pairs of socks he can purchase if he purchases another pairs of shoes in addition to the socks? So basically it's saying, you know, how many socks can he buy if he buys a pair of shoes? Um, so Corey has $40 to spend, so he can spend less than or equal to $40. This was an inequality. Um, and he buys a pair of shoes that's one-third off. So one-third of 36, or two-thirds of 36, which would be what's remaining, would be equal to 24. So he's 2.5x, so that's 2.5 times the amount of socks, plus $24. All right, so a lot of people struggled to write that inequality. And then a lot of people struggled to give me what the actual solution was um, in terms of the solution to an inequality. And we did this a lot in class, and so I was surprised to see that happen. We have 2.5x uh, plus 24, and we're just going through and we're solving this. It is less than or equal to 40 plus negative 24. Uh, 2.5x is less than or equal to... 16 divided by 2.5x or divided by 2.5 and our solution is the inequality that we get out of this so x is less than or equal to uh, that's going to go in 6 and the remainder 1 out of 1.5 which is going to be 2 fifths uh, 6.4 x is less than or equal to 6.4 this is what I wanted as a solution remember this represents the entire solution x is less than or equal to 6.4 obviously he's not going to buy 6.4 socks he's probably, he could only buy a whole number of amounts but um this is our solution. So when we want to graph our solution, this is another thing that I feel like a lot of people surprisingly struggled with was graphing the inequality. Uh, we have 6.4 here. We have 6 here. Uh, 7 here. 0 would be over here. Um, graphing the inequality, first thing that we need is we need a dot. And then because it's inclusive, 6.4 would be part of the solution. Again, obviously in the real world that doesn't make sense, but Again, we're just trying to graph the solution that was given to us. X is less than or equal to 6.4. And so here's the graph of our solution. So um, hopefully those are things that are st that stuck with us, but for some reason we just weren't thinking about how to use those particular skills uh, yesterday during the test. Let's flip on over and look at our aim. All right, today's aim, Kipsters will be able to find the circumference of a circle. using equations. So again, you're going to find that we're actually going to dive into a lot of geometry um, throughout the rest of this unit, but it's in the guise of this being a unit that's on equations and expressions. So we're going to be using a lot of equations to kind of help us jump through geometry, and that's most commonly how um, geometry is. There's a lot of equations that we have for various different shapes and the different parts of different shapes. We've seen that already with perimeter an area of rectangles. We've seen equations with um, angles and unknown angles. So it's going to be a lot of the same. All right. 
So first we're going to review um, a little bit of kind of the circle geometry, um, the vocabulary around circles. All right, so what is the distance between C? The distance between C and B is the radius of the circle. All right, so it asks you to write your own definition for the term circle. So go ahead and pause the video with your group and go ahead and discuss and write down um, a definition for the term circle. All right, obviously you guys have your own definitions, um, a more accurate definition, and you've got some of the vocabulary and the relevant vocabulary and more specific de definitions on the back right of your page, but kind of a more specific definition would be a shape in which all points Our equal distance from a center point. And you can think about that as like one way to draw it is using kind of a very rudimentary compass where you can kind of um, put a string on. Uh, on your paper and then on the other end of the string have your pencil and just draw everything that you can while holding the string in that center point and you know that would give you a circle. Alright it tells you to extend CB so we're going to extend this out to a segment AB so this is where it's going to hit here this is where we're going to put A where A is also a point on the circle. Alright, we can see that this creates um, a diameter. The segment AB is called the diameter of the circle, which goes all the way across. It is how many times as long as the radius? Um, you could say two times, you could say twice. Either way, it doesn't really matter. And that allows us to write a relationship uh, between the diameter and the radius. The And this is very similar to what we had to do on one of our problems yesterday um, on the test, uh, which was write an expression or an equation for this. This would be the diameter is equal to 2 times the radius. So this is um, something that we can use all the time if we want in order to find the relationship between diameter and radius. Diameter is equal to two times the radius. All right, coming over here, you guys have some protractors on your tables. Please go ahead and use the protractors to measure the radius and the diameter of each circle. And um, go ahead and write them out to the side. So um, let's call this um, circle one, circle two, and circle three and over here you can give me for circle circle one diameter is equal to radius is equal to and for this one to diameter equals and radius equals um, I would suggest measuring them um, in centimeters uh, using the metric system because it's a lot easier um, and you can figure out where that is on the protractor with your team. So go ahead and pause the video to make sure that that's done. Um, you and your teammates should agree before you move back on. Alright, I'm going to trust that you guys got that one right because on my iPad I can't really measure them uh, the same way that you can. Uh, so I'm going to trust that you guys got that right. All right, now we're going to move on to uh, circumference, and we're going to mathematically circumference. So circumference um, is a ratio with the diameter. So the circumference is the distance around the shape. So we can see that they've kind of said, if I take any circle, and this could be like a the distance around a soccer ball or a tennis ball 
golf ball, it doesn't matter. Anything that is circular, um, there's a ratio from the circumference to its diameter. Um, and it's the same for any circle. And it's kind of a magical ratio. So if we take the circumference and divide it by um, the diameter, we're going to get the number called pi. All right. Pi is a rational number and that if you tried to calculate pi and blah 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 there's scientists who are calculating the pi to like the billionth decimal place at this point um, which means you know it's again it's an irrational number so it would go on forever and never repeat um, we use the symbol pi to represent it and you guys probably know um, that it's equivalent to and as you can see if we we take this idea here where we wrap that string around to find the circumference and compare it to the diameter. We lay it out here. Um, we're going to get that it's a little bit more than 3, and particularly it's 3.14. That's something you already know. The circumference is a little bit more than 3 times the diameter. Um, there are a couple different approximations that people will use um, for pi. They will sometimes use 3.14. Sometimes they'll use the fraction 22 over 7. Um, both are equivalent. Go ahead and put 22 over 7 into one of the calculators on your uh, desk just to check to see what that actually gives you. All right. The ratios of the circumference to the diameter. Um, and pi are the same. All right, so circumference of a circle is pi times the diameter. So this is one way that we will remember this. The circumference is pi times diameter, all right, or diameter times pi. It doesn't really matter which way you write it, again, because of the commutative property. So this is another equation that we'll be using. This is one that um, definitely you should memorize. Um, we know it as the ratio of pi times the diameter would giving the circumference. So a lot of ways this comes from the same equation over here where pi was equal to the circumference over the diameter. That was for our definition of pi over here. And so really all they've done is they've multiplied both sides by the diameter to get this idea that the diameter times pi is equal to the circumference. Um, so we can manipulate this equation as much as we want. Um, obviously, if we were given the circumference and we needed to solve for the diameter, we'd be taking this and we'd divide by pi. We'd find that the diameter equals to the circumference divided by pi. So um, we can manipulate this equation as much as we want, um, depending on the information that we're given. All right, let's flip on over and look at the rest of our classwork. And so now we're going to go ahead and use um, our formula a little bit, um, our equation. It says the following circles are not drawn to scale. Obviously not because this is not 91 feet. And if this was 91 feet, obviously this is not going to be 21 centimeters because um, they look like they're exactly the same size. All right, so it says find the circumference of each circle. Use 22 over 7 as approximation for pi. So... Um, we're going to use the formula and we're going to write it down every time. This is part of the work. Um, and it's just getting used to using the equations and the idea that um, how we're going to use these equations. I know that each one of you understands that all you really need to do is multiply here. But again, this unit is about using equations. And as things get more complicated as we go throughout, um, you're going to want to have these equations. All right. So circumference is equal to pi times the diameter so I'm going to write this down for all three of them so I can plug into that pi times diameter um, circumference is equal to pi times diameter and it tells us that we're going to use the approximation of 22 over 7 for each of these so 22 over 7 this one is times the diameter of 21 And so when I go ahead and do that multiplication, this one's great because um, I can actually do the cross-canceling here. 
This is going to give me 322 times 3 is going to give me C is equal to 66. You could also put that into the calculator um, and get the same thing. Um, so go ahead and do the same thing with the other two circumferences uh, of the other two shapes. All right, so circumference is equal to 22 over 7 times the diameter on this one is 91. This is really great for this problem because 91 is also divisible by 7, so it is, this one is going to come out evenly. Um, that's 13 times 22, which I believe is 286. You can check that on the calculator. Um, you know, we can do that by multiplying top times top and then bottom times bottom, which would give me 22 times 91 divided by 7. Um, lots of different ways to put that into your calculator. So uh, looking at the last one, uh, we have the circumference is equal to 22 over 7 times 35 over 2. Doing some cross-canceling, that's going to give me 11. It's going to give me 5. Circumference is equal to 55. And that's the guy, kind of the great thing about um, using this approximation with some particular numbers. It's going to come out nice and even. Um, and it's a whole lot easier to do in your head that way. Sometimes you can go ahead and round it so it will come out even if you're just trying to get an approximation. All right, the radius of a paper plate um, is 11.7 centimeters. Uh, find the circumference, round to the nearest tenth. So looking at this, we're again going to want to use our equation. C is equal to pi times diameter. It's telling you to use something different for pi this time. So go ahead and plug in and solve this. You can use your calculator and then go ahead and round. So go ahead and pause the video with your team. Go ahead and do that. Um, and make sure that you've got the rounding correct because that's one thing we really want to check in on is we're going to do a lot of rounding uh, when it comes to circles because we're using that irrational number pi so things are never going to come out um, evenly. So C is equal to 3.14 times the diameter which is 11.7 and this gives me 36.738 tells me to round to the nearest tenth so I'm rounding here I'm looking at this this means I'm going to round down uh, which means that it's actually going to stay the same so I'm going to get 36.738 Point seven. I'm going to change this from an equal sign to an approximate sign. C is approximately 36.7 centimeters. All right, um, now it's going to ask you to use the pi button. Um, if you use the pi button on a calculator, uh, we look at this, it's going to be C is equal to, and then it's going to give you 3.141592, blah, blah, blah. Um, if any of you have seen the movie Life of Pi, um, you've seen the main character at the beginning of the movie writing out the, the letters for Pi on and on and on. It fills up like this entire huge chalkboard. Um, again, that's just that reminder that Pi does go on forever. Um, scientists have been, mathematicians have been calculating this number again. And it's calculated out to like the billionth um, decimal place at this point. Um, so 3.141592, two blah, 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 times 11.7. And what we're going to find here is that we're going to get the same answer, um, rounding it to the nearest tenth, because that's how precise our decimal is up here of 3.14. Um, we might get a slightly different answer for if we round it to the nearest hundredth, because we can see... We run out here at the hundredth place, so sometimes it's going to change the preciseness of our work. Right here, so when I used the pi on my calculator, I got 36.75. And actually what we see here is when we, if we were to round that to the nearest tenth, it would actually round up to 36.8. So we can see the preciseness changes a little bit. Um, but if we're talking about 0.1 of a centimeter, we're talking about a millimeter, if you know, we may not need to be that precise, but sometimes there are times we need to be that precise. Um, if I'm machining 
something to like work in the engine of a car, then I might need to be that precise. Um, if I'm just trying to, you know, measure something to be um, like a paper plate, obviously that's not as crucial. So 3.75 and um, the next number here is 6. Um, so this tells us that we're going to round up. And so I'm going to end up with C is approximately 36.76. Alright, a circle has a radius um, and a circumference of C centimeters. Write a formula that expresses the value of C in terms of R and pi. So remember we have the two things that we already know. We know that diameter is equal to 2 times the radius. And we have the formula that C is equal to pi times diameter. So this is very similar to the work that you were asked to do yesterday. Go ahead and put these two equations together and these two relationships together into one formula um, or one equation for what C would be equal to with the radius instead of the diameter. So check this in with your group. When your group has come to a consensus as to what that equation should look like, go ahead and come back and check in on me. So looking at this, um, we're thinking about this as really all we're doing is we're replacing the diameter with 2 times the radius. So pi times 2r, or, you know, again, commutative property, you may see this as 2r times pi, or you may see this as 2 pi r. I mean, this is probably the most common one that you'll see, but in reality, when you're using this, you're probably going to use it more like either of these two, where you're multiplying 2 times the radius, because you're thinking about that functional relationship, where 2r is just the same thing as the diameter. All right. Um, one last question. It says, the figure below is in the shape of a semicircle. That means it's in the shape of half of a circle. And I want you to find the perimeter of the shape. So I'm going to give you and your group a little bit of a hint here, and I'm going to ask you to go ahead and try it on your own, um, and then we'll come back. Looking at this, to find the perimeter of this shape, we have half. This is half of the circumference. So think about how you can find half of the circumference. And then in addition, the other part of the perimeter here would be this bottom part, which would be obviously labeled as 8 meters. All right, so go ahead and try and work this one out uh, with your teammates on your own. Then you can check back in. All right, so looking at this, uh, we have the perimeter would be the distance around. So for me, modeling with equations is a really important piece of the work um, because it kind of helps me think through mathematically what do I need to do and that's something that you really need to get in the habit of as you get into more complicated material particularly in geometry you're gonna want that mathematical model in order to kinda of help you keep going and figure out what math you need to do so looking at this I know the perimeter of this is equal to this part which would be half of the circumference plus this bottom part, the diameter, which would be 8. So I could say plus D or I could say plus 8, whatever. I know if I'm finding this, this is 8. And I know the circumference would be the same thing as pi times diameter. So I could come out here and find the circumference off of the side, pi times diameter. And we're, we see that the diameter is 8, so is equal to, it tells us to use 3.14. 3.14 times the diameter times 8. Let's see is equal to 3.14 times 8, which is equal to 25.12. So P is equal to half of 25.12. And so I want half of that. Um, so if I want half of it, that means I need to divide by 2. And so 
P is going to be equal to 12.56 plus 8, which would be 20.56 meters. All right, so I know a lot of you didn't go through and you didn't think through that with an equation. Again, I really want you to start thinking about doing everything and modeling it all with the equations. Number one, because this is the equations unit, and really that's the biggest point of this. The uh, geometry is just something else we get to learn along the way. Um, but also because the modeling with equations is going to help you think through the different steps um, that you need to be able to do and the order of operations that you would need to do them in. All right, um, so please go ahead and read through the relevant vocabulary. Have one person uh, read each of the vocabulary words and the vocabulary terms um, as you look through this work, and then go ahead and move on to your alone time.